If you're a new Linux user and you want to upgrade from baby's first Linux distribution, also known as Ubuntu, then there's a good chance that you might have heard of Manjaro. So I constantly see Manjaro recommended to new users who want to use all of the cool features of a distribution like Arch, but they either don't want to set it up or are scared of the install process. Now Manjaro is based on Arch Linux, so in theory you should be getting all of the same great features that Arch Linux has. Because after using something like Ubuntu for a while, I was the same way. So Arch has a few big advantages over something like Ubuntu. Arch is a rolling release distro. That means you get access to all of the latest versions of software, whereas with something like Ubuntu, you could be waiting up to six months for an update for some package. So if you want to play around with something like the latest version of GNOME or KDE, then with Arch Linux, you get it almost instantly, whereas with Ubuntu, you might have to be waiting up to six months for the next release. And Arch Linux also has the AUR, which is a repository that users can submit packages to. And this basically means that you have an easy way to install almost any software that you could ever want from popular browsers like Brave, software like Spotify, Visual Studio Code, and more. And so no more adding a million PPAs like you do with Ubuntu or tracking down a .deb file on some random website. You can just type one command into your terminal and instantly get almost any software that you want. Let's face it, Arch takes a little while to set up and get a proper installation working. Even now, when Arch Linux is getting more accessible with things like the Arch install script, it's still probably a little bit too advanced for a lot of new users. So what if there was an easier way to do it? Well, that's essentially what Manjaro is. So you get an experience similar to Arch, but with an out-of-the-box desktop environment, and you can pick your favorite between GNOME, KDE, XFCE, and a half dozen other ones. And I think that these are the main reasons why people choose Manjaro and are constantly recommended Manjaro. But I've actually been a Manjaro user in the past, and I really do not recommend using Manjaro these days, either for new users or anyone. And I'm going to be a little bit harsh in this video, but I really don't endorse any hate to Manjaro or the dev team. So I will just say that this is my opinion and try to be as fair as possible in this video. But let me just explain why I really do not recommend Manjaro Linux for beginners. So Manjaro is not Arch Linux. It is based on Arch and it is a fork of Arch Linux. And so you might just be thinking that it's basically Arch Linux with an installer and a lot nicer out of the box experience. But let's talk about one of the biggest differences from vanilla Arch. So Manjaro has a very interesting practice where they hold back packages by a week or two or three. So they don't use Arch's repositories. They have their own repositories where they only add packages after they have been tested. So if you install something from your package manager, you're not getting them from Arch's servers, you're getting them from Manjaro's. And so supposedly this is to make the system more stable as these new updates will be tested first. So in theory, if you update a package on Arch, it could potentially be unstable and cause some breakages in your system even though practically this almost never happens after running Arch for more than three years. But does it really make Manjaro more stable than Arch? So the biggest issue with this is the AUR, or the Arch user repository. So whereas the main packages will be held back by a few weeks, the same does not apply to the AUR packages. And so you can see how this might cause some conflicts, because maybe an AUR package depends on a newer version of a package that is being held back. And when you're using Manjaro, you're essentially using a version of Arch Linux that is out of date by a couple of weeks. So if your AUR package requires, say, version 2 of some specific package from Arch Linux, but Manjaro has still only upgraded to version 1, then you're going to get some conflicts and errors. And if you use a lot of AUR packages or you want to, then you're going to have to get ready for some breakages. Either that, or you just have to not use the AUR, which is half of the reason why a lot of people use an Arch-based system in the first place. And you are essentially encouraged to use the AUR with the graphical program PAMAC. PAMAC is a software for Manjaro that essentially is a graphical version of a package manager. It makes things easier. And I've done a video in the past explaining why I really don't think it's a good idea for people who have no understanding of the AUR to use it. Because if you don't understand anything about the AUR, it can be a security issue. 
and you'll also have no idea how to fix things whenever they break because things do break with the AUR. They are just user submitted packages, so there's no guarantee that they're going to work. And since Manjaro is often recommended for beginners, you'd better believe that they're going to be downloading all kinds of software from the AUR like Google Chrome, Spotify, or every normie's favorite programs, especially because the AUR is one of the main reasons why people want to use an Arch-based system. And of course, they do have a warning whenever you try to enable the AUR, so they do mention that it is going to cause some breakages potentially, and it is disabled by default, which is good. But you can't really blame somebody if they heard that the easiest way to install Google Chrome is to use the AUR. And this would be fine if they didn't use the AUR as one of their main selling points for their distribution. You can even just look on their website and you can see how much they promote the fact that the AUR is going to make things easier for you. And the Manjaro team just has this kind of weird contradictory attitude towards the AUR, where they advertise it as a reason to use their distro, but then at the same time, they also blame the user if they run into any issues using the AUR. So they even have this long forum post right here, basically blaming the user if something goes wrong. And so ironically, I actually find Arch Linux to be much more stable than Manjaro, which is not what you would expect from an easy Arch Linux distro. Now, I also wanted to share my anecdotal experience using Manjaro because a few years ago, I don't really like to admit this publicly as it was kind of a dark period in my life, but I actually used Manjaro for about a month. A few years ago, Manjaro was actually a lot more widely accepted as a quality distribution. And so of course, in my search for the perfect Linux distribution, I got recommended Manjaro because what's not to love about it? It's a beginner distro, the idea of a rolling release distribution with up-to-date software sounded cool. I have access to the AUR. What's not to love? And just like it is now, that is the main selling point. And so I probably used it for a month. And during that time, I just had so many issues with it. And it probably was because of software updates because I had installed a bunch of AUR packages. But can you really blame me? Can you really blame a noob with not much experience with Linux? Of course, there is a warning there that the AUR is not officially supported, but do you really think that somebody coming from something like Windows, where you install random EXEs all the time, while you're getting warned with nothing happening, would you really understand the full consequences of what you're doing? Listen, these are beginners to Linux that we're talking about, and so what they're going to do is they're going to want to install Spotify, and they're going to look up a forum post, and they're going to say just install it from the AUR, because that is the easiest way to do it. And can you really blame them when they just go through, flip a switch, and download it from the AUR? And I remember things getting so bad that I eventually had to reinstall Manjaro from scratch. And things just felt buggy and cobbled together whenever I was using it. I remember I was using i3 Manjaro, which is not even an officially supported flavor of it. So they have these community managed versions of Manjaro, which just feel a little bit more cobbled together than the official releases. And when you need to find a solution, their wiki is not that good. So what you're basically stuck doing is searching through random irrelevant forum posts that are years old, desperately trying to find a solution. And yes, you will run into issues on Manjaro that just don't happen on Arch Linux proper. And so the Arch wiki is not always something that you can use to fix your problem. And I actually had so many issues with Manjaro that I actually ended up switching back to Windows and giving up on Linux, at least for a while. That's how bad it was, and that's how frustrated I got with Manjaro. And yes, I realize that this is just my experience, and I'm sure that some people have used Manjaro for years with absolutely no issue, but from my story and reading the experiences of others online, I'm definitely not alone in my experience. And of course, we can't talk about Manjaro without talking about Manjaro's team. So their team just has a very bad track record, and I really don't trust them with anything these days let alone my Linux distribution, because their QA or quality assurance on everything they do is just non-existent. So not once, but two separate times, their graphical package manager, Pamac, essentially ended up DDoSing the AUR. So there was a bug in Pamac where every user just ended up sending thousands of requests per user, and Arch Linux had to even block Manjaro temporarily from accessing the AUR. And now, of course, this was not intentional. Sometimes bugs happen and it's embarrassing. But the problem is that this happened not once, but two separate times. 
And the fact that they could allow this to happen twice just speaks a lot to the level of quality assurance that they put in place before they ship things. This should be something that you're able to catch in testing before you actually release it to the public, but that is just not something that Manjaro managed to do. Another example is they let their SSL certificate on their website expire not once, not twice, but five separate times. And if you know anything about maintaining a web server, setting up a security certificate is one of the easiest things that you can do. These days, all you have to do is run CertBot and it automatically takes care of it forever. So this is something that you can set to renew automatically with just a simple command like CertBot. But even if you don't set it to renew automatically, this is something that you should get notifications about before it actually expires so that you can take care of the problem before it becomes an issue. Trust me, I've set up an SSL certificate on my website and it's really not that complicated. And so this happened before. And at that time, they even said that you should fix it by rolling your system clock back. And I don't think I need to explain why this is a really bad solution. This should be something that you're able to fix in something like 30 minutes. And this happened not just one time, but on multiple different subdomains across their website. One time their forums SSL certificate expired. And it just happened time and time again, as recently as late last year. And Manjaro fans will say that these small hiccups aren't really a big deal. But in my opinion, it just speaks to a general incompetence that presides across the entire project. If they can't do something as simple as this, why should I trust their competence anywhere else? And finally, just because they claim that Manjaro is so much more stable than Arch, they really have a nasty habit of packaging unstable changes for end users. So of course, whenever you're developing software, you'll have stable releases of your software for end users to use. But of course, you'll also have an unstable branch, which is basically a work in progress, where you're testing out maybe some new changes that don't work properly yet. And Manjaro, on multiple occasions, has taken these work in progress versions of software and shipped them to end users. So they took an unstable branch of Asahi Linux and shipped a version that is broken on some platforms without consulting with the developer. And I guess that they shipped this early in order to show off some new cool features of Manjaro, like, oh, look, we can do this. But they just ended up making themselves look more foolish. And like everything else, this has happened multiple times with multiple projects. And the worst part is that the developers for these projects, they get issues reporting bugs in a branch that was never meant to be shipped to users in the first place. So they're essentially wasting these developers' time by having people create issues for things that weren't meant to be released. There was another time when they shipped a Firefox theme with their distro that ended up breaking whenever Firefox updated. And then Firefox themselves got complaints that their browser was broken when it was completely Manjaro's fault. And the developer of the Firefox theme even says to not package this with your distribution, and yet Manjaro still included this by default. And when they learned that they messed up, they just said that, whoops, sorry guys, we just never saw that part. And this has happened so many times, there was even an open letter written by the community to not ship work in progress work. And this should really be obvious because if you're working on something, it is a work in progress and it's not meant to be used by end users yet. But I guess for Manjaro at least, this was not obvious, so that is why this needed to be written. And once again, if all of these had happened just one time, it probably wouldn't have been as big of an issue as it is. But these just keep happening over and over again, and that's why I don't trust Manjaro Linux anymore with anything. So by now, hopefully I've convinced you why you probably shouldn't be using Manjaro Linux as a beginner. Maybe if you have more experience using Linux and you know how to fix issues as they come up, then you would be okay using Manjaro, but definitely I wouldn't recommend it for beginners. So what do I recommend using instead of Manjaro? Probably the most popular Manjaro alternative would be Endeavor OS. So Endeavor OS is another fork of Arch Linux that has an easy to use installer and an out of the box setup already there. And I've personally never used it, but I always hear about how it's basically Manjaro done right. And a lot of people even recommend just using something like Arch install, which is an uh, installer script for Arch Linux to make the whole process easier. But I actually don't even recommend using this. I have a whole nother video explaining why, but I personally just recommend using Arch Linux proper if you really want to use an Arch-based distribution, then sticking with the original is probably going to be your best bet. And while yes, it probably is going to be more difficult for a beginner, 
as long as you have an open mind and are open to learning new things and kind of fixing issues yourself whenever they pop up, they don't really happen too often, but you do need to know how to troubleshoot things. But if you can do some research yourself and read the Arch Wiki, then you'll probably have a pretty good time using Arch. Arch Linux is basically the distro that I picked right after Manjaro. And if a noob like me could figure it out, then I'm sure that you can as well. Just remember that distributions like Manjaro don't necessarily make Arch Linux easier. They just kind of abstract a lot of things about Arch Linux to make it even more difficult for you to understand. So that would probably be my recommendation if you really want to get into the Arch Linux side of things. Of course, there are plenty of other non-Arch based distributions that are also great. But hopefully in this video, I've encouraged you why you probably shouldn't use Manjaro as a beginner and hopefully saved you some time and some headaches down the road.